animals like chicken, mutton, eggs, milk. So these type of food we get from animals and plants. Animals and I know herbivores means the animals which eat plants are called as herbivores animals. For example, cow, goat, camel, elephant, sheep. These are the herbivores animals. Next one is carnivores. Carnivores means the animals which eat the flesh of other animals. Flesh means mouth which we call it a Canada. So, the animals like lion, leopard, tiger, these animals, they will kill the other animals and they eat it as the flesh and the food. So, they are called as carnivorous animal. And next one is omnivorous. Omnivorous animals means the animals which eats both plants as well as the animals. They are called as omnivorous animals. For example, we human beings, we eat more plants, means the vegetables, fruits and the animals like egg, chicken, mutton. So this type of food item which we eat. So we human beings are omnivorous. Omnivorous means the people, the animals which eat both plants and animals are called as omnivorous animals. Next point, second point from the plant side children. Just look it in your textbook. Plants exchange air through tiny openings called stomata. So, in the plants, children, there are small holes, small spores in the leaves of the plant, which we cannot see. With the help of microscope, we can see the small holes in the leaves of the plant. So, it is called as stomata, the tiny holes or the tiny spores. In the plant is called as stomata. Plant exchange air. So, how they will exchange the air? Plants take carbon dioxide inside and they leave oxygen. So, one more time I will repeat it. Plants take the carbon dioxide inside and what they will release? Very good. Oxygen. So everyone is telling to plant more trees. Why? Because we human beings use the oxygen for breathing. So plant give us oxygen. So we have to plant more trees. There will be increase in oxygen. So plants take carbon dioxide inside and they leave oxygen and that oxygen is used for animals, human beings, insects, birds to breathe. Here in the animal side, second point, animals have different breathing organs. For example, nose and lungs, man and tiger. So, we used to breathe with the help of our nose and lungs which are inside our body. So, the animals like tiger, lion, panda, giraffe, zebra, these animals, they breathe with the help of nose and lungs. Next one, gills. So, gills means the skin of the fish is called as gills. How the fish will breathe? With the help of skin of the fish, the fishes will breathe. The skin of the fish is called as gills. Next one, 
a holes in insects so the insects like cockroach lizard cricket dragonfly they will also breathe but they do not have holes they breathe with the air holes in the body they have small holes in the body with that holes they will breathe so animals have different breathing organs in them next third point from the plant side children plant show slow and subtle movements such movements include growing of shoots flowers turning in the direction of the sun etc so the plants they cannot move how the animals and human beings birds they move from one place to another the plants cannot move but in one place they can show the movement how they will move for example sunflower plant so the sunflower plant is it moves its face it turns its face towards the direction of sun if the sun is at the morning east direction the sunflower turns its face towards the east direction if the sun is at the west direction the sunflower turns its face towards the west direction so this is the movement in the plants they cannot move from one place to another they remain stable but there is a small movement in plants for example sunflower plant next here in animal side third point animals show more visible movements like walking crawling hopping running in search of food security and water animals they can move we can see the animals moving so we human beings we can walk jump run so in the same way the animals they can walk they can run they can jump they can crawl so the snake it crawls on the land the lizard it crawls on the wall so we can see the different animals moving from one place to another place next here in the plants what plant reproduce by seeds some plants reproduce through stem leaves roots buds etc <coughs> so there is a reproduction reproduction means giving birth to young one or lays egg here in the plants they cannot give birth they cannot lay egg but there is reproduction with the help of seeds seeds means beechagalu which we call it kannada so when i will take a fruit strawberry fruit or watermelon fruit in the watermelon fruit there are black seeds in the watermelon fruit when that seeds i will put it in a soil after some days there seeds will grow up into watermelon tree in the same way there is a reproduction in plants with the help of seeds next in the animal side children animals reproduce by directly giving birth to the young babies or laying eggs so how the animals they can reproduce they can give birth to the young one or some animals they lay egg for example hen duck snake these animals they lay egg and some animals like lion cat dog tiger giraffe these animals they give birth to a small young animals so there is reproduction in both plants and animals next point in the plant part plant do not have sense organs like animals but respond to touch and light so compared to the animals 
the plants they do not have any sense organs in them but some plants they can respond when we touch them so the plants like insectivorous plants venus fly fly plant when we will touch that plant they closer the leaves of this plant they automatically closes so when there is a touching sense to these plants but in our surrounding the plants they do not have any sense organs in them here in the animals animals color usually animals have five sense organs nose tongue ears eyes skin some animals may lack one or two of these sense organs so all the animals including human beings have sense organs so we all have five sense organs they are eyes ears nose tongue skin so with these sense organs we can see what is happening in the surrounding we can get the information about the surrounding next one point plants go through a cycle of growth throughout their life in the form of development of branches flowers new leaves etc so there is a continuous growth in plant so there is not a short term period so in this time only the plant will grow it is not there so the plant grows day to day continuously so there is a growth in plant there is no period of time of growth in plant plant can grow continuously throughout their life so this is all about the plants now let us move towards the animal side animals after reaching their adult stage of life stack cycle stop growing in size so in the animal side there is a 40 kg age limit for animals for growing for example we human beings at the adult stage it there will be a age limit for growth after when we grow on we elder there is no growth in human beings in the same way children animals also have a period of growth but in plants there is no period of growth it grows continuously daily so this is the difference between plants and animals plants and animals are both living things in the surrounding now turn the page children page number 170 just open page number 170 things to remember see you can just see in the blue they have just shown you things to remember first point plants make or produce food with the help of non living things like sunlight air water how the plants will prepare the food very good you are right a water sunlight with these three things plants prepare their own food second one point just look at in your textbook children plants contain a green pigment a green color called chlorophyll that helps to trap the sunlight and use it to produce food for the plant so the green color in the plant is called as chlorophyll the green leaves is called as chlorophyll which we cannot see so what what is the use of chlorophyll to take the sunlight to attract the sunlight the chlorophyll is used to prepare the own food next point the plants are the produce 
users. So the third point is the plants are the producers of the living world because they produce their own food. So the plants are called as producers. Why we call them as producers? Because they produce their own food. And all the animals are directly or indirectly depend on the plants for the food. So the animals are consumers because they eat the plants and other animals. But the plants are the producers. They prepare the fur for other living things. So this is the third point children. The third one point. The plants are the producers of living world. Because they produce their own fur. So plants are called as producers. They prepare their own food. And the animals are called as consumers. They are depend on the plants and other living things. Fourth one point children. Animals are consumers of the living world. Since they consume plants and other animals too. So, we call the animals as consumers. Means, they cannot prepare the food. So, animals are dependent on other animals or other plants for the food. We call them as consumers. Next one point children. Plants reproduce by seeds Reproduce through stems, leaves, roots and buds. So, there is a reproduction. Reproduction means Santa Nodpati, which we call it Kannada. So, the plants can reproduce with the help of the seeds. So, when I will take one seed and I will just put it in a soil. After some days, there is a growth in the seed. It slowly grows and it becomes a plant. So, there is reproduction in the plants with the help of seeds, roots, stem. Last one point children. Animals reproduce by giving birth directly to the babies or by laying eggs. There is also reproduction in the animals also. How they will reproduce? They give birth to the small young babies and some animals, they lay eggs. So, this is all about the lesson number, the chapter 1. Living things in that we had just compared between plants and animals. So, in this page number 170, just open the first one, words to know. They had given some new words here. We will write the meaning of these new words. So, the first word is chlorophyll. Here children, you have to spell with me the spelling of chlorophyll. See here. C H L O R O P 
animals. The animals which eats which eats the flesh of animals. So, carnivorous means the animals which eat the flesh of other animals. For example, leopard, tiger, panda, <coughs> sorry, tiger, lion. These are the carnivorous animals. They hunt the animals and they eat them. Has the fur. So, they are the carnivorous animals. I will spell the spelling. Spell with me. O Y A M Y A I B O R D E S. Omnivorous. Omnivorous means the animals which eat both plants and animals. They are the omnivorous. For example, we human beings, bear, are the omnivorous. Animals. So let us start it. The animals. The animals which eats the animals which eats both both plants plants and other animals. Plants and other animals. They are called as omnivorous animals. So, the animals which eat both plants and other animals. They are omnivorous animals. So, children, this completes our chapter number one syllabus that is living things. Plants and animals. Now, let us move towards today's homework part. So, just copy it. Today's homework is read and write. Today's read and write. Today's classwork. Two times in your classwork notebook. Two times. In the English notebook, you have to read and write it correctly with a pen that is blue pen and black pen two times in your English notebook. Now, it's time to end our session. So, children.